little bit, huh? Just a taste. That's all y'all want, just a taste. Um, well, working in Africa, a lot of humanitarian work in Africa. Uh, being the grandson of BB King really doesn't give um, a little bit of wiggle room. We have no space to really do too much because the, the shoes, you know, we're size 13, so the shoes are big. Uh, big shoes to fill. Um, and I don't play no music and I don't sing. So I had to go a totally different direction uh, with my skills. So of course, you know, I'm no longer managing artists, so no longer managing Jackie Christie or any of the NFL players. That whole portion of my world is behind me now. Um, focusing on uh, human rights education. I still have my fashion line, the King Collection. So just doing things from a different perspective to really keep the King name for this year. So let's start with your fashion. You still have fashion. Right. How did that start? When did you start? The clothing line King Collection we started about two years ago uh, with just bow ties, as you see my wig bow ties. Um, and then we also do uh, fashionable blazers. Uh, of course, they can get a little hot, so you know, we're outside, so I didn't wear one today, but you know, everybody know how to find my blind, my blazers on my social media. Now, you said you've been in the world. How long have you been? Oh, God. I mean, I think my entire life, honestly. Um, Helping people and giving back is something that is meaningful. You know, when you find your place in life, it's more than just working and getting paid. You know, if you can't give something back to people or help people or find a platform to just make someone else get a benefit, then really you don't gain from it. It almost was the purpose. You know, so humanitarian work with human rights, building homes in Africa for the villages out there in the forest region, so not in the city too much, uh, but out where they're still using the river for their bathing and washing their clothes. We're out there building houses for these people that are technically still tribal in 2017. Uh, so giving back and then also helping uh, raise awareness around human trafficking in Florida. Uh, a gentleman's course my nonprofit, a gentleman's ball, is something that we use as a machine to help other local nonprofits benefit from the funds that we raise because they're the ones that actually house the human trafficking survivors in the country and uh, in the county. So, with your work in human trafficking and kind of method, have you seen a difference? Oh, a big difference. I mean, just in the people because we work with specifically the survivors. I'm not more so on the end where they're running and kicking in people's doors, rescuing kids. I'm not on that side of the house, no. <laughs> a, little uh, a little extreme. My Marine Corps days are so far behind me. I'm not doing that. But we're more on the uh, anti-program, so we're helping raise the awareness, making sure folks know that Florida is ranked third in the nation in human trafficking for kids ages 12 through 18. So yes, any child is susceptible to being snatched. There is no demographic, there is no person who looks like a particular element that you can look at and say, watch out for this type of person because they might be a human traffic violator. There's no signs for this industry. It's, it's, it's one of the number one silent crimes because there's nothing you, you can protect yourself with other than being aware that it's relevant and how you go about your daily life. So to see it is very hard, but to work with survivors and hear their stories, it's just enough. Where can, where can our readers and viewers find out more well, you go to the website, uh, on kingdombrand.com. All our stuff is on our website. Then you have uh, you know, human trafficking. You just go to the state website, humantrafficking.org. And then various organizations in the county as well, in Central Florida, between Orlando, Clearwater, and Tampa, they facilitate uh, Miracles Outreach, uh, Say La Freedom, it was our last benefactor, uh, the Florida Coalition Against Human Trafficking. There are many organizations out there that work in that anti-awareness program. So if information is there, all you do is hit Google, you'll find everything you need. And research. Okay, so you have a military background as well. You were a corporal in the Marine Corps? I got out as a sergeant, actually. Uh, but yes, uh, eight years in the Marine Corps. I did a couple tours. And I was stationed in Japan first, and then I got out in Albany, Georgia. Oh, relaxed Albany, Georgia. How did that experience change you as, as a person and a man and then moving into your business? Uh, just to be honest, I mean, it helped. It helped build my foundation simply because the Marine Corps gives structure. And you know, me going in the military wasn't by choice. You know, I did my I did my due diligence in the, as a young child, you know. Okay. Did my things out there, right? You know, it's, it, it's it's a rebound. So those second chances help people elevate themselves and I took advantage of it. So it helped mold me. It taught me about proper attire and how to properly dress and just go about 
a different motive in life, uh, a different focus, taking life seriously because when you're in combat, your life's on the line, at that moment, you think about a lot of different things you wouldn't normally think about when you're, at, when you're back home shooting the breeze with your homies or hanging out at the club because your life is not on the line, so your focus is in a different perspective. So, you know, it teaches you a lot, indirectly and very much so directly. really when I started working. His grandfather or BB was the kind of grandfather that let kids come around and not earn their way. So even as a child, going to the concert, yeah, he comped our tickets and gave us free ticket, but you still had to earn. So I was still slanging the luggage, help load the tour bus, or when they get to the city, I'm unloading the tour bus, taking the luggage to each room, you know, dropping off the bags. So I earned my pay. And he would pay me, you know, 100, 200 bucks for doing the luggage run before and after the shows, and then at the shows, I was a part of the security team. So it wasn't just hanging around and enjoying the show, we were working, you know, walking the crowds, et cetera, et cetera. And that's one thing I loved, I loved about my grandfather the most, is that he taught us the stability and the foundation of hard work at a young age. So as I got older, all that did was expound on me. And you know, 19, 20, before I went to the military, he asked me to come on the road, and I said no, because I wanted to go trap sell my stuff, so I was out there working, I didn't really? care, and then I got caught. So once I got caught, that put me in the military, and it was either that or go to jail. So I don't think they still do that anymore, but I was one of those lucky people that still had that I But I believe in a billionaire quote, seven streams of income. Seven. Seven. That's the minimum. To get to that level of wealth, you can't focus on just one thing. Bill Gates, yeah, he designed a chip, but look what everything that Microsoft offers. It's more than seven things. He's making money on many different ways. Jobs, Steve Jobs. I mean, every bill you can think of, they're making money on seven or more different avenues to keep that. Look at Jay-Z, almost gonna be a day now. He got a basketball team, he got music, he got clothes, he got recorders, he got many different avenues. Nobody sells on just one thing to make that check to get it where you wanna be. And that's all about branding. That's why my Instagram, my social media is king the brand. Simply put, multiple streams of revenue from different avenues to get you what you want. That's right. I'm going to use it. You're going to use it? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should use it too. That's brilliant. Right. So tell me a little bit about some of your mentors. Do you have any people uh, that you've yeah. worked with coming up in the industry or in life in general? I've taken a lot of advice from a lot of people and learned a lot of lessons from a lot of people. But of course, my... My, 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 my main mentor, of course, was always my grandfather. He taught me the business. He didn't teach me the music, he taught me something more important. Because anybody can play music, anybody can be talented. But if the business behind the talent is not official, it's not proper, it's not right, then the talent's just gonna suffer. Can you say that one more time for the people in the back? <laughs> you know, the business has to be affected. If the business is not grounded, the talent is gonna go to waste. Yes. Period. You're not going to get anywhere just because I can rap, just because I can sing, just because I can play instrument great. You have to have the business perspective behind it. Know your contracts, know your publishing, know the difference between BMI and ASCAP, know your royalties, how to get your royalties, know about spins and rotation with radio stations, know how to get those reports. That business perspective is what put me in a position to sit back and just really take my time and get what I want. I'm in no rush to do anything because I know how to go make a dollar, because I know the business perspective of it. I can get a client, I know exactly how to take that client, get him on the radio, wait for the BMI check to come in in the next quarter, and I got a check. Yeah, and he's not even signed. So it doesn't take a lot. You don't have to get a record deal to get to become successful. You need to know your business. If you don't know your business, then ain't nobody gonna sign you first off because you're just a hothead thinking you got all the talent that's gonna get you. So it takes a lot more than just that. And I'm a prime example of more than just talent. I structure my world around business, business perspective, business meetings, and objectives. And that's how I accomplish everything to get it done. And it's that simple. Why did you get out of the business of managing time and working with musicians, artists, and artists? I honestly, I got out of the business of managing talent because I lost my motivation. Um, when my grandfather died, that was a blow 
to me because I lost that person I could call. I lost that person I could say, hey, Papa, what do you think about this as my next move with this particular client? I lost that perspective. And that's a big deal when you're talking about somebody who's been doing it for 73 years. That's a lifetime. And I'm not talking about trying to do it. Been playing the guitar for 73 years. That's a lifetime. Most folks ain't lived that long. But he's doing a craft for 73 years and it took him to the grave at 89. 16 Grammys, umpteen amount of records, blues club restaurants franchises. He's a brand. Multiple streams of revenue, historical factor. He's gone. So if that was my driving force to want to be more successful in helping people in the music industry, I lost that. So I had no choice but to let that portion of my life go because I knew he would have wanted me to do something other than follow in his footsteps. He did music and he would tell me, son, you can do more than just be in music. Don't just be simple and do what the industry expects you to do, because that's what I did. They expect someone in the family to not only probably sing the blues or step out and play, mm -hmm. but that's what the industry is expecting. Yeah, that's not necessarily That's not necessarily the case. So you can find something else to do to win and be successful in without following the exact footsteps. So with B.B. King, he has a very established legacy. His restaurants are still living, his music is still playing, and now, I'm still going to do my job and carry it on and do other things to bring further light to it. You know, be awarded twice, presidential awarded, global philanthropy award. I ain't stopping. No, I'm going to keep going. I got more work to do. Hands down. So, what are some of your goals? Since you say you have more work to do, have you mm. done? what are some of your goals? Maybe in this the industry this in might life. sound a little egotistical, but. My goal is to be a billionaire next year. Period. People okay. say, well, how are you going to do that? It's attainable. I said, first off, certain things I've done, or currently doing, are already paving that path. Okay. So going to Africa wasn't just for humanitarian work. You know, Africa is one of the wealthiest countries, and it's probably not the wealthiest country in the world in natural resources. Everything is there. Gold, granite, iron ore which makes steel, and then my favorite and your favorite, if, I don't know, most women, diamonds. Diamonds are galore in Africa. They're everywhere, you can walk down a river and find it. So at the end of the day, why not take a trip to the motherland, do some historical factors and research, do some humanitarian work, and purchase a mining license. Let's open up a diamond mine. Did you get into that business? I know that's not something that you just stumble across. Right. Okay. Well, it takes a lot because mining licenses are not cheap. They're really expensive. Going to Africa is not cheap. That's expensive. Uh, talking about a two thousand dollar plane flight just to get there. It takes three days just to get to Guinea. Never been there. Right. People don't just wake up and say, "I'm going to Guinea today." No, it's a lot, right? So you're talking about a person, humanitarian work over here. You got previous music history, working with artists and managing talent, models, and all that craziness. But like I said, once you find your group your niche, you're gonna find enjoyment in further success. I love speaking. When my partner called me and said, hey, I need you to come in business with me. You've been doing it for 30 years. He said, I need you to come in business with me. I said, well, what? He said, you're going to Africa. I said, really? He said, but you're going to just look. I want you to just go see. And then once you go see and experience it, then I'll know if you're ready. So you hadn't been there before? No. First trip when I went, it's an eye-opening experience. Right? You know, and I know I'm running my mouth, but you know, hey, I, I can't help it. I'm a speaker. I can't help it. I get to talking. I don't shut up. We love it. That's right? the point. <laughs> We're trying up. to get to know you. I right, get to know okay. King, huh? Yes. Uh, so, we here. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing today? So your goal overall is to become a billionaire financially. Well, that's the financial means. I mean, at the end of the day, the purpose of that is so my kids ain't got to work. My kids, 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 kids ain't got to work. The world is not going cheaper. No, it's going to cost not. more. So if the value of the dollar is going down and the cost of living is going up, then it's my only due diligence to pave the way for my grandbabies to not have to work so hard or do as much as I can so they can be, they can sustain themselves. Because trust me, it ain't, it's hard out here for a pimp. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. Yes, it is. 
Yeah. We're still working on the BB King movie. That's coming. Um, God. Are you casting or anything like that? Or I don't care what production? they do. Okay. I, I, they, you know, they just did still casting people, trying to find us the roles and get the funding. You know, that's why I said it's in the process. It's coming. Um, okay. so it's a lot of projects. A lot of projects. I stay working. So, you know, always speaking. Getting ready to go back to Africa. Going to Atlanta. Birmingham. So I got a couple dates next week. I'll be out of here. You know, I stay busy. Is there anything that you would want to do? You haven't done already. Mm. You know, skydiving. Did that in the military. Got my jump. Got, got, really? got, got my wings. How about bungee jumping? I ain't doing it. Why not? I'm black. I've done it. I'm, I'm black. black. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. I, how can you go skydiving well, and not bungee jumping? First of all, to put my life in the line of rope, that shoot, I know, gonna catch the air. That rope break, I don't know about that. So that shoot, I packed it. I was taught how to pack it, so I know it's coming out that bag. Okay. That rope though, I'm trusting him to clamp it right. Cause I'm already at the edge. He got the hole in. I'm trusting somebody else with that rope to clamp it. I don't think, look, world, hey, you're listening, pay attention, look. Pay attention. Hey, hey, look, this guy right here will never bungee jump. And the day that I do, Angela Magazine, I promise you, right through the cover, they're gonna be like, You said you never would, and I did it, and now I'm doing it, so go figure. But, I promise you, it's less like hell. Ain't no bunch of jumping over here, bro. You gotta so make that happen. Yeah. Ooh, they're gonna pay a whole lot of money to get me to jump out of the room. <laughs> but, how are you using your platform specifically to reach others and communities? Well, a lot of things that are already in the works. TV is gonna be my next uh, attack mode. Because at the end of the day, how do you reach a multitude of people without having to do a lot of work? You gotta get on TV, right? Radio works, it's expensive, it's overpriced in some markets. TV, create a TV show, platform, speaking engagements, record it, put the video material out there. You gotta get on the web. So, our next goal, of course, is just media. More media, more media, more media. Are you working with teams right now? Are you looking for teams? Um, I don't necessarily have my own team for that particular purpose um, because, you know, magazines like you guys are out there to look for content as well. So it's, it, we're always looking to work with people, partner with people. It's always avenues and ways. I can do everything myself, but is that really meaningful to keep it all to myself? People can go out and do things. I can do something with somebody else and put them in an engagement or an event. They can network with somebody else and get something done. And I didn't even do that, but just have them there. It's that simple. It ain't about paying them for your service. It's just you're helping them expound on them because it's upon them to do something with the time and opportunity other than just what they were paid to do. And that's people lose ground. I booked to do something, but guess what? I might be booked to do something. Where the men have been? Hey, what's your name? What you do? Here's Network. a card. Call me. Networking. Call Network. me. No. No, Donna, move. No. Don't call her. Call me. We got this. We ain't got no manager. Call me. We'll, we'll do this. At the end of the day, networking is about taking opportunities yes. and making that opportunity bigger than what the opportunity was. If you only do what you were contracted or supposed to do at that moment, you waste time. My grandfather always said, if you do a show, ask them, can you come back again? Can y'all have me back? Would you have me back? Can I come speak again? At the end of the day, all you're doing is ensuring your success for future money later. But if you don't ask nobody, can you come back? You go, all right, thank y'all, good night, help y'all. And you had to go. You might get booked three years from now. But see, you can create a regular rotation of speaking engagements every year simply by just asking, can I come back next year? Can I come back? Let's go ahead and lock the date in. You can put the deposit and the money in later because you know you're going to make the money because you just made it. And you already solidifying yourself. And that's how you stimulate future money. And say, well, I make $100,000 a year off of performing because these are guaranteed dates that I know I'm going to get every year. And as you get those dates, more folks are going to come to the show. And I want to book it. And they, just because they went to the show. How y'all doing? Shout out to NZM Magazine. Thank y'all. I really appreciate it. If you want to find me, find King the Brand at kingthebrand.com. Instagram at King the Brand. King the Brand Official on Facebook. It's a brand. So all you got to do is look up King the Brand and you'll find me. College boy, King the Brand. Awesome.